Are you finished? What? Okay. So, hey, how's it going? I'm making this video, and hopefully this is something that becomes evergreen. And what this is going to be, this is going to be a little video. So, uh, you started playing Persona 5 Royal, and the Velvet Room is the only part of the game that is not explicitly tutorialized to you, or that you don't get, you don't like, you don't understand, or you just don't feel like engaging with, or don't, you don't feel the need to engage with. Well, just to make sure that any of my friends who are playing the game, people want to have the, the best experience with this game ever, I'm making this video to give tips and pointers, because not everybody wants to just, you know, hop a party chat and have a one-on-one -on -one chat with me, but so you could see how to use the Velvet Room to your advantage, how it's, it's super important to just make the game's combat flow and just combat difficulty trivial, and how it's just as important, if not the most important thing to keep up with. So, you know, some of my Persona tips in general, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the way. Number one, don't buy guns. Don't spend your money on guns. Try to keep your favorite character's armor and um, weapons up to date. Um... And there's a couple confidants that you should definitely hang out with a lot. And once you kind of get to the mid game, so maybe if you're watching this and you're not at the third palace yet, um, Yusuke at some point will mention a church you can go to as a location. And there's a shogi player there, shogi player Hifumi. She is your battle strategy confidant so her perks all involve you being able to escape from ambushes being able to change up your party members swap in and out your party members on joker's turn and do that kind of stuff okay and so there's the baton pass system when you couple that with being able to switch in your out your party members those things are great so your your party members have set personas and skills that they learn so a separate video i'll make is one that explains you know, hey, you're brand new to Persona, and this big dork Drew says, um, what kind of skills should I make the party members have? Like, what should what should I learn? What should I keep once I'm full up on my slots? What what should I do? Um, what should that look like as I move through the game? And um, how do I make sure that I don't, you know, run into a situation where I forgot one of their best moves? Well. Later in the game, you can go to that same church, the place where Hifumi is. It's a it's a two for one. You can go to that church, and you can relearn an ability that your party members, like you, that you erased or that you had them forget and overwrit, uh, overwritten with like a the next thing that they learn. Overrode with a new ability. So anyway, church is super important as a location, and plus, you know, it's just gonna make your battle strategy and uh, quality of life a lot better. But this is about fusing. This is about personas. So. Every Persona 5 Royal owner, you put the disc in, you have Persona 5 Royal, it's going to let you... Let me actually turn on the music volume real quick. I love it, but, you know, I'm trying to do a video real quick. Let's see. No, it won't. It won't let you, will it? Okay. Anyway, it's fine. Um, Alright, so we're going to go over here to Persona. Okay. So, you know, whenever, whenever you're leveling, whenever you get a mask, whenever you get a persona, if it's one that you've acquired out in the, out in the, out in battle, out in a dungeon, a palace, whatever, if it's one that you've acquired from combat as a mask that joins you, you need to make sure you go back to the Velvet Room and that you register it to your you compendium, business. your library. You'd like to read the registration? You want to register all the ones you've got. It'll tell you what your. Let's see, is there anyone that has. Current? Okay, so see, it'll tell you current and non current. Okay, so just gain some XP. So as you can see, like, my persona's at this level in this playthrough already probably look far different than what maybe what you're used to. Um, so this is already getting into some of the strategy. So I have a bunch of my personas, as you can see, covering some different elements. I've got this one is covering uh, bless damage, fire damage, 
Psi damage, electric damage, and ice damage. Now right now, this one's focused on all foes. All foes, all foes. That's the prefix, the M-A. Ma. Ma Ragi, Ma Psi, Ma Zio, Ma Bufu. Anyway, all you need to know is that because it has that Ma there and it says it's all foes, that's like it's going to hit every foe. So it helps you out to build personas that maybe have attacks that hit all foes, but also maybe have one that is focused on having as many move types as possible that only hit one foe. That will help you in the long run, even though sometimes you do want to hit every foe. Sometimes, you know, like there's a there's a boss fight where you don't want to be using this to hit every single foe. Um, at least not every use, okay? So, but but I'm still important to know. I'm, I'm making sure to carry a personas having type diversity of like skill set uh so here's here's what we're gonna do we're gonna show you so you know early game you've got a pixie here that has zeo you've got um but yeah Ar archangel has so hama does not count that is not an elemental attack it's a it's a it's a bless school of spells but it's not like a bless damage it's a uh, so it's affected by whether the bless is null. So if you see on the little sheet above this, where it says uh, NUL with that icon. So if, if you're null to bless school of spells, I guess is the best way to say it, then you're not going to be able to get insta-killed by this spell or the versions of this spell, like a medium chance to insta-kill a foe. Because the enemies can use these on you later. Um, but this isn't going to do damage to, to like something that's weak. Um, if Granted, if they're weak to Bless, they're going to be more likely to take damage from this. But what you're really looking for is not to not to really play around too much with those. Uh, that's more advanced stuff, and you don't really need to worry about it. So here's what I'm going to go to. So every owner of Royal can go to the... can go download DLC. So if you really want to just trivialize this situation, Persona 5 Royal lets you download all the paid Persona 5 base game from 2017's DLC. That means you don't have to pay anything. If you have Royal installed, go to your add-ons and you'll see, oh, like, free free DLC. There's a Persona DLC in the PlayStation Store. Okay? And that means you can do this. This is a tactic. Is this this is an advanced, want? like, tactic that you can, you know, m use to make the game more trivial for you. Um... This, so in Persona, skills that hit more times are almost always stronger. You know, if it says one to two times, and you're looking at like a light, you know, a, a light hit for one to two times, a medium or heavy hit for one time may be better. But as soon as you're in that range of two hits or three hits that are guaranteed, it's always going to do more. So this is going to do more then almost any spell at, of this type in the game it's going to do so much damage because four of these hits might outclass some of the most advanced single hitting spells in the game and it's going to it's going to do like four to eight hits and it's going to hit all the foes so again this is a very broken overpowered persona it's a dlc persona you can add this to your repertoire and you can slap some other skills on there it's got you know five other slots here and you could add some slots where you add, like, curse and fire damage for single target. Or, you know, so you could add some support skills. Like, this is going to increase your healing skill effects by 50%. So if you learn this passive, and then this restores a medium amount of HP to all allies. Those two have great synergy. That's going to do a huge chunk of HP to everyone. So with this persona, you can both nuke your foes. You know, uh, nuke being... I shouldn't say nuke because there's actually an element called nuke. You can do absolutely shred through enemies, and you can also heal if you need to. Now, Joker's SP will get burned up a lot, but, you know, you can just manage Joker's SP. And if you've engaged with a combat sum already, then that won't... This is not for I just turned on Persona. I played about an hour. This is... I've maybe played a dungeon or two, a palace or two, and I'm just kind of trying to make sure I'm set up for the rest of the game, okay? So... You can pull this, this out. What you want. You can hold no more I think I already have the max personas. Is this what you want? So see, this one's got uh, Freylia, which is a medium tier of nuclear element damage to one foe. That's great. 
This is all foes. This is all foes, but you got some wind, you got some curse. This is a great skill because it means the persona is going to level up a lot more often, even when it's not the equipped one that you in battle with, because only the equipped one gets experience. Some of those mechanics are just, you know, I'm elaborating on those. But so you have here, if as you, as you've gone through the game, it's taught you about using guns, right? So the reason I say don't buy guns is because they're they're in a piece of equipment you can just spend all your money on, but you could use that money much better. And then going from one level of gun that you own to one that attacks for slightly more is not as productive as something that just benefits you all the time. Because once you run out of, you know, let's say you're in a boss battle. Once you use up those bullets, while they might refresh after the battle ends, if you're in a long boss battle, you're going to be out of bullets pretty soon. Whereas if you learn a skill on a persona that does gun damage, you get to take advantage of that element... So maybe they're, you know, on the on the sheet here, you see there's two orange to start off with. One that looks like a little explosion, and then one that looks like this gun icon. So maybe they're weak to gun, but they're really strong, or they nullify against, like they're strong against just generic physical attacks, okay? This element will help you still hit enemies without having to use your bullets, or with maybe already ran out of your bullets. So... It's really important. One of your characters will get a really good skill with that. Let me see if I can go pull. Is this what you want? Okay, so here you go. See the little icon? This is a physical damage. Yeah, check this out. So, physical damage with high chance of critical. This skill is super useful for getting enemies knocked down who either don't have weaknesses or they don't resist or are strong against physical attacks you can still get enemies knocked down with this um so this is very valuable more so than a lot of so see this is a colossal physical damage attack to one foe surprise miracle punch is a much more useful thing to have in your toolkit or on one of your personas than this you know strong single attack to one foe granted this also has the benefit of decrease decreasing their attack so that's kind of nice uh, apt people, a great passive for anyone that's going to have physical skills on their persona, like in this little uh, 8 ability sheet, this passive is going to increase your crit chance when using this kind of thing, a physical skill, because that's the only thing they can crit, is like physical skills and gun skills. Um, okay, so, I'm covering some of this, let's see, yeah, so, you've got some DLC personas here. So see, this is a severe physical damage to all foes with a high chance, not not a low chance, not a low physical damage, severe damage, that's your amount it's going to do, to all foes, high chance all, on all those hits, and it's going to hit one to two times. This is really great for th a couple different reasons. A high chance of critical means it's like a miracle punch, but it hits all foes and it does a higher base and it can hit one to two times. So it's, it's infinitely stronger than like something like Rising Slash might be, even though Baton Passing is a nice way to buff up an attack. Yeah, this is probably a skill unique to this persona, but I'm just showing off some of the DLC personas, but th that's not really what this video is about, okay? So you've this got, persona? you know, you're leveling up, you've got your Arsene you from want? level one, okay? Yeah, you've got your Arsene. Is this what you, you, you got your Jack o' Lantern. Is this what you want? Such rudeness. Is this what you want? I know. Yeah, the, the Velvet Room this attendants won't, won't shut up at me. This persona. Okay, here you go. Look at this. Light curse damage, one foe. Oh, look at that. This He's also persona? got a gun attack. Light gun damage to one foe. Okay. This persona. So what you kind of want to do is you want to think. This what persona? are the skills that are like good from this persona that or that are harder to come by? And I want to make sure that I, like, create a family tree. I want to make sure I'm having all my future personas that I fuse. Because when you fuse them together, you get to pass on skills. So you can pass on some of the best skills throughout the game. Or, you know, the better version of those skills if you have a higher tier. So when you go over to fuse, Time this is where the tutorial gets kind of into depth. Execution. You're going to see these options, okay? And you're gonna go to fuse by result most of the time. You want? And this is the easy way you can hit you can hit down and you're gonna see the lowest level you can fuse. And you're gonna be able to go and see 
Okay, I've got all of these in my compendium already. This one, if I fuse this one, this is a brand new one. Oftentimes, you want to just fuse to get as many new ones as possible. When you get a new one, if I complete this fusion for this new persona, that one is automatically registered in, in my compendium. I don't have to go back to that other screen and register it. Um, if I've already had a version of that before, and it has better skills this time that I've used it, I might want to go and register and update it, and it will show you what the what you have registered already and compare it to the new one that you just made. This helps to where if you fuse a great persona, and then like later in the game you're getting you're like, oh I'm gonna fuse that persona again. It helps you to make sure that you don't overwrite one that you want to keep with all the good skills you fused with it. So you okay with this? Okay, so this has Garula. Medium wind damage to one foe. And wind is one of the elements that you want to have um, to make some a couple of different personas that are going to last you all through the game, even to your like like level 60s, um, that will help you with one of the bosses that can give people difficulty only because they don't prepare or they don't engage with the game's fusion systems, you know, in a way that's going to benefit them. So... This one's got Garula. I'm gonna go over here. Not terrible, but this not one's impressive. got Zyanga. And I think it confused both of these. Let's see. Okay, so the key component here to both of these is Shiki Yuiji. Okay? So what I'm gonna do See, I can only I can't make both of these at the same time, but what I can do is I can make one of them. I'll show you. You okay with this? Select the skills you'd like to inherit. Okay, so it's gonna have you choose a trait. So you can sh you can make it focus on you can have a perk that decreases nuke skills cost um, by half. You can make it so that it strengthens skills that target all foes. What I'm gonna do is it already has a Garula, which is a single foe ability. I'm gonna have it sh uh, learn this one, so it strengthens skills target one and foe. Now a bunch of these target all foes. I'm gonna make sure I give it one of some of these elements that it doesn't have. Okay, now remember I mentioned that if it hits two, more than one time and if it's guaranteed, it's almost always better. Double shot is a very, very strong ability for a long time because it's a gun element, because it hits two times, and because rarely do you find an enemy. Uh, much like this Fuki here, the persona I'm about to make, if you go over to the left side of the screen, it is strong against gun, it's not strong against physical. Usually, it's the inverse of that. Double shot is a very, very good thing to pass along. And let's see. Its power will be I'm gonna go ahead and go with Curse because, so, early game, you wanna try to have a lot of personas that cover Bless damage, curse damage, nuke damage, and psi damage. Because you're not going to have a lot of party members, personas that help you cover that. Plus, I prefer, in my playthroughs, I prefer to have personas that also cover ice. Because I rarely use Yusuke in combat. Um, Ryuji is better in almost every way, and that's my opinion. But if you want to use Yusuke in battle, um, as someone you want to regularly use in battle... He and Ryuji are usually pretty interchangeable because they, he does ice and it's physical attacks. Uh, Ryuji does electric on his persona and then physical attacks. They both have a pretty similar move set, so kind of pick your preference there. I just think Ryuji has better skills earlier, and um, yeah, I just prefer to cover ice. So you know you want Joker's persona just to be able to cover whatever your other party members can't do, or to provide a second coverage for ones that they cover so that you can get extra hits in on enemies that are weak. So, you know, the, when you're fighting an enemy, a really tough one, that's only weak to win. Morgana's not the only one on your team that can do anything about it. Or that Morgana and Joker aren't the only ones. I'm gonna have it learn... What did we say I was gonna do? Not see. Its power will be nothing unusual. Okay. Its power will be enough, then let okay, us Okay, so one of these that I'm using in the fusion is Shikiwiji. Well, 
I made Shikyuiji, and Shikyuiji at this level is so strong and so good, but I'm fusing it to create this new one and get a benefit. But what I'm going to do is finish fusing. Great, got this new one. And this is kind of the pattern. You want to do this often, especially once you've fused the one that's really strong, you, you really like. You'd this like is what you want to use your money on, that you save from not buying guns or not going crazy you in the equipment shops. You want to go, here. and I want to pull back, I want to go to the compendium, and I want to get Shiki Ouija back and pay 7,000 yen, persona? and withdraw and this, persona. this persona. I'm going to go back to the fusion. What? Still have business here. Okay, let me do this again. Create a new persona. Persona fusion. Used by result. Alright, let's go see. Where was that other one? You okay with this? Yeah, Zionga. Okay. Select the skills you'd like to inherit. Ooh. So decrease this SP cost of healing skills by half. Select the skills you'd like to inherit. That's super valuable. I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so see, this is what I was talking about. Rampage, very strong physical skill. One to three times. One of the most important, it hits all foes. It's a very strong skill for very, very long. Now, Snap is medium gun damage to one foe. This is a perfect example. Double shot is better than Snap. Why? Because two light hits is better than one strong hit, at least in this game. Plus, the more hits your ability does, the more chances you get a crit on it, and it knocks them down. So, you know, that's a benefit. Let's see. Its power will be nothing unusual. Now for a rebirth. So, I've used Shiki Uiji to fuse again. And when you fight Shiki Uiji, like when you come up against that paper mache giant, uh, you're gonna know one of the reasons why I made that persona, and you're gonna want that persona in your repertoire. So I'm gonna go Finished back. For now. You'd like to read the compendium? I'm gonna read here. Go find Shikiwiji again. I sorted it by level and only the ones that I've registered to get through here quickly. There you go. What you want? So see, this one is null to, sh to physical attacks and gun attacks. It's null to bless and curse, so it's also null to um, the school of bless and the school of curse spells that have a chance to one hit kill you. It is only weak to nuclear and you can deal with that later if you need. So if you're fighting this persona, make sure you're using nuclear. But yeah, so got double shot. So you've got a lot of good skills on this. But this is also one that I want back this in my the fee is required. This is your power. in my lineup. Okay. Read here. Let's see, by level, we're gonna go down to Kaguya. Is this what you, you can the hold first time, The first time you summon it, it's only gonna cost uh, zero, but you will have to Done already. What? pay after that first summon. Okay. The inmate needs Let's execute him. So, this is another thing I wanna explain. If you've gotten far enough to unlock the extra perks that unlock on this menu here, you have the fusion menu, you have this, and you later you'll have two other options here. The itemized persona will be reborn anew. is fantastic because it looks look what it lets you do. You can looks like it'll become a weapon. Make a great weapon. Oh look at that! If I have a black Kotagana item, that is an item that I have acquired. That's why it uh, looks like a trash item. But if it's um, if it says it's a, a item that you can transmute, that's what you're going to be able to use it for this. So. I can make this super strong weapon for Joker out of it. Okay, a lot of people don't even know about that because A, they wouldn't have arson at this point and they also wouldn't uh, be poking around in here. But so, see, I can get it rid of this hermit. A skill card. I can get rid of this persona and I can, like, sacrifice it. 
granted, it's still in the compendium. Okay, it's not. It's just temporarily going away. And I can get a, a skill card that lets like this is like a TM or an HM from Pokemon, and it would let me teach the Ice Skill Bufu to any persona I want that has a free slot. Okay, so that's pretty useful. Hama and Mudo are just like the. It seems it will become a skill card. Hama and Mudo are those like insta kill. It appears it will become something to protective. Kill. Okay, it appears it will so that's kind of cool. Protective. That would give you a ring that lets you have the medium bless skill Koha, even if you didn't have it on one of your personas. It appears it will become something So see something that th those are pretty good. It appears that lets it you have Zio. Something protective. So see if you can make an accessory that you can equip to give you an extra element coverage. That's really good too. Oh, Shiki Ouija is the one who turns into a skill card for double hm. shot. A skill card, huh? Okay, so that's just a little bit of a. Let me go to back to Fuse by Result. Okay, Sudam is new. And see, it doesn't matter that it's a level 17, because when you're talking about getting a new persona, I could fuse and get this new level 17, and then combine this level 17 with another, and it just keeps going, and you keep filling out your compendium and getting access you to okay new skills. This? New varieties. Not terrible, but not type impressive. coverages. Plus, you okay with this? I kind of want to free up some of my spots. Let's see. Not terrible, but not impressive. Not terrible, but not impressive. Select the skills you'd like to inherit. Here we go. So, so you could give this one. It will receive some new power. And then uh, that one now has a lot of a great rebirth. coverage. And so I've just made a couple that have multiple elements and can cover a variety of situations. Uh, this is probably where I'll end the video. Um, just, just a couple other general tips, I think, before I go. So, you know, it's going to tell me right now that the Moon Confidant is going to allow this to gain some more XP as it levels up. It's going to learn. Oh, look at that. It's going to nullify a weakness there. Um, so it's already going to drain uh, if you look on the, the weakness kind of chart up there, it says uh, DR under the ice icon. It's actually going to heal you if you get hit by an ice attack. So, no ice. You don't really need it. You can overwrite that because innately it's going to heal you. It's, it's going to drain ice damage. and So you want to get hit with ice. You don't want to nullify it. Um, actually, don't even. I don't even know uh, the order of operations there. If it's going to prefer the... The drain, or is it gonna prefer the null? I'm not really sure. Uh, let's see. Can't fuse any higher than level 25 because that's just part of the rules of the game. You can't fuse personas above your level until you have a perk from a confidant later in the game. Okay. You okay with this? Select the skills you'd like to inherit. Yeah, so see these two? Sat uh, I'm not really a big fan of either of those. Raise Snow Pawn, always in effect. Increased chance of ailments after baton pass, but decreasing the cost of healing skills. That's pretty fantastic. So, let's see. Its power will be nothing unusual. Girls, let us begin. So it's not just about passing down skills you like. One of the other things I'll cover before I go is I'm gonna show I'm gonna go look at my party members personas and I'm gonna give you some guidelines there, because Alright, let's go. You change your mind? Are you finished? What? And I'm just gonna back out so I can stand here and go to the I should menus. write something. Okay. Alright, you get a confidant.
Okay, so... Rampage right now is the only physical skill that he really needs. If I was talking about what, what should I replace next time I level up, I could replace Memory Blow, Headbutt, Lunge, maybe keep uh, Headbutt because it hits one foe when you don't want to hit every foe. It's nice to have that option. Oh, see, uh, Assault Dive is going to hit one foe for a heavy amount, so I could replace any of these with that. You want to make sure that you have your... Um, so you, you want to replace Mazio with the one that's medium electric to all foes. So like the, the next tier of that. You want to make sure you keep Zio and Mazio. That way you can hit one enemy when you want to hit one enemy and all enemies when you want to hit all enemies. So I'm going to keep this on, this person on his persona skills here until I learn the medium electric damage to one foe. And since the skills are full, I'll probably use that to just choose Zeo to replace with Ma, you know, Z Zeonga or whatever it's called. Um, so, okay, here's the thing. So, see these skill cards? This is a buff. Increase attack for ally for one turn. You need to make sure that you keep the skill card, blue skill card looking thing that, that um, removes debuffs from you or for, removes buffs from the enemy. Because they're going to buff themselves or they're going to try and debuff you and you're going to want to be able to remove that. Um, I don't spend much time with the skills of the school where it increases attack for one of your allies for three turns. It's usually not worth casting on all your allies because by the time the couple turns rolls around it's all fallen off. But the ones you do want later are when it takes one of your turns, you know, like, and you use this spell and it increases the attack for all of your allies for three turns, that's when you want to make sure you can do that for, you know, you want to have a, a card skill on one of your people that can increase attack for all allies, increase defense for all allies, and increase, like, accuracy and um, speed or whatever for all allies. Um, and then again, you want to have a skill card that removes debuffs from your party, from all your party, and then removes the buffs that the enemy puts on themselves, okay? Um, you've got a, you know, so he's got his skill set here. So here you go. So, you know, you start with Dia, which is a single single ally heal, Dia, and then you get Diorama, or Diorama, whatever, and that's a medium amount of HP to one ally, so I replaced that skill, Dia, with Diorama. I replaced, um, you see, this is, so once you get, you know, media, when you get media Rama, you replace media with it. Um, high chance to confuse one foe. So these are, these status affecting abilities are also very useful. You'd be surprised how many bosses they work on. And if they actually, you know, if you use it and it works, that enemy is going to be susceptible to technical damage. And they might even be able to get knocked down before. Be, uh, because when you successfully apply an ailment, and then you follow it up, the game will actually have certain abilities that light up and say technical, and it will tell you that if you use a certain type of attack on an enemy when they have that status, it'll indicate in the game's options, like when you're selecting your abilities, that this skill is going to do a lot more damage and be extra effective. Keep Lucky Punch until Morgana learns Miracle Punch, and this these are super useful. If you have skills, your party members will learn skills that are support, that, that cure ailments, like cures dizzy, forget, sleep, hunger. I don't need to keep Patra because I have me Patra. It's only four more SP to cure everyone. So you might as well have that one in case two people have it. Then it's immediately more value. So what I would replace Patra with is if you're going to, down the line, if you're going to learn one that cures different ailments, I would replace Patra. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, that covers kind of how you want your personas uh, on your party member skills to be going along. Items. So, Morgana lets you work at the desk in your room at night and make items, okay? So these are skill cards. 
you have to have Yusuke make these for you, or you have to get them from sacrificing personas like I showed you earlier to the electric chair. And once you have one, you can you can have Yusuke learn it, and then he can make copies of it. So, yeah, in general, you want to save your one of these. But what I'm really going to is your items. Okay? So, let's see, when I get over to... Here we go. So as you're going along, you're going to be able to loot these items from mementos and from the dungeons, and they're going to be an item that you can use on any character on their turn to deal an element. So this would deal 50 damage to a foe of fire, and you could use it on Ryuji's turn, and normally Ryuji can only do electric or physical attacks, so you'd be able to knock down an enemy this week to fire on Ryuji's turn. You need to save every single one of these and if you're if you're making tools and infiltration tools and like items with Morgana at the desk in your room or you just don't know what to do on any given night because you're stuck in LeBlanc go to your desk make some of these because you want to cover these elements and you want to save them all for the boss in October on the calendar okay well, that's the video for today. I will probably make another file of one with some more advanced stuff and focusing on some other aspects that people could use. Maybe some, maybe even some confidants. You want to get Ryuji to rank 7 as soon as you can because then when shadows are lower level to you, as long as you are sprinting, you can sprint into them, jump on above them, and insta-kill them, skip combat, receive XP, sometimes a persona mask, and money. Uh, it works in palaces and mementos, and the sooner you can get that, the this essentially removes all grinding you have to do, and saves you hours upon hours of combat that you would have to do or that you'd want to do to try and get XP and money. You can just sprint around like Naruto run and just destroy everything. It's great. Uh, granted, it only works on shadows that are weaker than you lower level, but once you get on a roll, you'll be. You, this will help you get through mementos in like one third the time. So, okay. There's the video for today. Hope that was helpful, and now I just have to archive it.